In today's video, we're going to have a look at putting together a gear mechanism. So here's the finished article that we're going to end up with at the end of this tutorial. So let's just show how the gears work. So I've got two internal spur gears and an external spur gear. And a series of mates link, link the gears and allow them to rotate. We've got also got a motion study, which we're going to play back. We're going to create this in this tutorial as well. And you can see the gears mesh in unison as they rotate. Let's stop this. OK. So SOLIDWORKS has some, in, some useful tools to help you um, create gears. Um, so a lot of the hard work is done for you, but there is a trick to it. So let's start a new assembly. So in this assembly, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start a template sketch. So on the top or front plane, let's um, turn this on. And then we're going to start our sketch. Oh, sorry, before we start on sketch, let's go to the add-ins. And it's really important that you have the SOLIDWORKS toolbox and the tool work, toolbox browser turned on. If these add-ins aren't turned on, the next step is not going to work. So we, we need to make sure we've got this turned on. So let's start the sketch on the front plane. OK, so I'm going to draw a series of circles. And these circles are going to represent the interactions between the gears. So I have my three circles. Let's just align these two horizontally and then put the third one in. OK, and you have to take a note here of the size of these circles or soon to be gears. So my central gear is 80 mil. My second gear is going to be 40. And the outer gear is going to be 160. So if you're if you're going for a different ratio, you have to kind of change these on the fly. And also it's it will, this will dictate how many teeth you can actually use in, in your gear mechanism. So we've got our basic template. So now we can bring some gears in. So in the toolbox panel, so if we go right over to the right hand side, design library, and into the toolbox panel, we've got, it's got some useful standard items that we can draw in. So going down to power transmission, going into gears, I'm going, to, I'm going to pull out a spur gear. So let's place this. And I'm going to ignore the configuration at the moment. Oops, let's bring it back in. Didn't, should have accepted it before. Uh, so into the panel, place it. Let's accept this time. We just have that one item. So now I'm going to mate this gear in place. So let's make it float because it's already fixed. And I'm going to just fix the rear face. Let's find the plane. I think it might be plane three. And then we're going to mate it to the front plane. And we'll do this for all the gears so that they're all aligned. So now we just want to align it to the to the central axis. So we're going to make it concentric. And there is a center point here. We'll mate it to the center point. 
it's concentric so it doesn't match up to any of the circles at the moment but that's okay we can now go into the configuration so now let's edit the configuration so you can see it it does move edit toolbox component and we get the configuration panel up at the side again so I'm going to modify the module modify the number of teeth so the module is going to be two and whatever module you choose you have to you have to remember this for every gear you create that are going to interlink I'm going to use see 20 teeth is not enough so let's go up to 40 and 40 brings me to where I want to be. I will explain why I am where I, where I want to be in a minute, but that we are intersecting the, the interaction circle and that's exactly where I want to be. So I've got a pressure angle of 20 degrees. I'm not gonna go into that in this video, but that can be important in gear design. Let's just change the shaft diameter. So the most important things is the module at two and the gear, the number of gear teeth at 40. So let's create a second gear and see how this interacts. So this gear is half the size of the first gear, or it will be once we've placed it. Again, let's ignore the configuration for the moment. And then let's just mate it in place. So plane free, align it with the front axis, turn it around. Yep. And then concentric mate. We'll put it where we want to be. Accept that. And then let's go into the edit toolbox component. And let's select the module two again. And this gear is exactly half the size, so we're going to have half the number of teeth. So we're going to have 20 teeth here. And it will mesh exactly where I want it to be. So now this is a good point to explain why, um, why, the, why we're intersecting these circles and they don't represent the outer or the inner diameter of the teeth. So we're going to leave this here and just flick to some images just to show how gears kind of mesh together. Here we've got the first two gears that we modelled. So I've just laid them up in 2D on the screen. Now if we overlay the outer diameter, the inner tooth diameter and the circle that we used to join the two gears on screen, we come up with what's shown here. So the innermost section of the gear tooth is the root circle. And the root circle needs to be in clearance of the outermost edge of the gear, which is the addendum circle. Now, because these two diameters are in clearance of each other, we need another circle in order to you know, guarantee the gear mesh. So the pitch circle comes into play. And this is this is not a midpoint between the two. It is just a an interaction point that's that's used in gear design. If we overlay the dimensions of the pitch circles, we come up with what we drew earlier on in SolidWorks. So we had a dimension of 80 mils diameter for the large cog and then we had a diameter of 40 millimeters for the smaller cog. The last thing we need to understand, at least as far as SOLIDWORKS gear design goes, is the relationship between the pitch circle and the addendum circle. So I've overlaid a couple of dimensions for each of the cogs, and this, is, this represents the module. Now the reason why we kept the module constant across both cogs was it tells us the amount of interference required. The amount of interference is going to be set and standard 
and it needs to continue from one cog to the other. So if our smaller cog now interacts with a third cog, the third cog will also have the same level of interference and will have the same module no matter what the diameter. And that's, um, that's it as far as the slides are concerned. We can now go back to the CAD. Okay, so let's finish off the second cog. Let's just add a nominal shaft diameter. So we'll make this 14 mil and we'll add a keyway. And the keyways are just useful here just to kind of show the rotation later on when we begin to animate. Okay, so let's add our final spur gear. So this is an internal spur gear. Let's place it. And accept. Oh, need to need to go back and place it again. So just remember to uh, tick to place. Okay. So let's let's go and mate it again. Let's find the plane free. Mate it to the front plane. And then let's apply a concentric mate. And let's bring it in line with the first cog. There you go, concentric. Okay. Right, let's go in edit toolbox configure edit toolbox component. So again we keep the same module as already explained and we need to move up to 80 teeth. So we went went to 20 teeth with the smallest cog. We can now go up to 80. So Basically, if this was a standard spare gear, the diameter would be 160. But because it's external, it's a little bit bigger, so we've made it 180. So there you can see everything aligns. So just to recap just now, so we've got we've got 40 teeth on the on the first cog. We've got 20 teeth on the small cog, and then we've got 80 teeth on the outer cog. So the outer cog being four times the size of the smaller cog. At least in terms of diameter. Okay, so now we're, let's just add some color. So blue, yellow, and green. For the three cogs, let's change, let's brighten up the display a little. That's a little better. Okay, turn off a few mate, um, a few items that we don't need. Now let's go and have a look at some gear mates. So we go into the mates, go into mechanical mates, go into gears, and we want to select an edge on the radius of the two gears and it automatically gives a ratio. Now let's change this because I want to go with the drawing ratio. So 80 and 40 for the large and small cog and then the small cog to the outer largest cog. We're going to make it 40, it needs to be 40 and 160. This represents the diameters that we drew earlier, of course. Let's accept this. Oh, please remember that you please remember to put everything in clearance before you attach these mates, because everything would start going a bit wrong now. So if I'm I'm just moving this manually, and you can see the gears because we've set them up appropriately, they mesh and they, there's no fouling. See so if we if we got the interactions wrong these gears would slowly start to foul each other. And you'd have all kinds of problems in a motion study. So let's go into a motion study and just 
quickly animate. I'm going to add a motor to the innermost blue gear and I'm going to slow it right down. So five rotations per minute. I'm selecting the, the direction of rotation. So if you didn't see initially, I, did, I selected motor and I've just added some motor parameters. So I'm now extending the timeline to 15 seconds. And I've clicked the camera and I've added a keyframe because I've just moved it to where I want the camera to be. And then added a keyframe at the start. So now I'm calculating. I've selected calculate. I'm running the study. Studies concluded, and now we can play it back. And the calculation was important because then you can go on to render if required, but we're not we're not going to render in this tutorial. So I've just changed the camera view and then added a keyframe. So you can see there's a black line, so that shows that there's a transition. So we went to eight seconds and added another keyframe. And that's added a blank because the camera didn't move. We moved the camera in. And if I select another keyframe, this is all being done while the camera is selected in the in the bar. See here, the camera's highlighted keyframe. Adding the keyframe gives us an interaction. So the black lines show movement of the camera. See so no movement now until eight seconds, and then it moves in. Now you can mess around with that black line to slow things down or speed things up, but I'm just doing a basic animation. And let's just play it back one last time to finish the tutorial. It's going to zoom in, and there's no need to add any any other interactions other than the rotary motor because the gear mates were managing everything we needed to manage in this animation motion study. And that's it. That's how you put together a gear mechanism and animate in SolidWorks.